Very amazing now, Joe. We're making pear and ginger sponge pudding. Oh, the one about. Yeah, I think it's on the yard and the page. Can you have a snooze? Can you have a snooze? No. Thank you. Very bad, Joe. Very bad. Very bad. Very bad. So the, um, you can see that the sugar and the, the butter is just sort of melted. It's not completely, but just so it's a sort of golden colour. Give it to burn because that's good. Bit. And the pears are just going to feel in the water. <coughs> and obviously, it's a little bit stalked off. But this is a good thing to do with pears. It's very, very hard to find to buy a white pear anywhere, even the ones that say, Ripe and ready to eat, or get them home, and actually it's like an apple, you know. So this deals with that problem really, but there are loads of them around at the minute. Does it get a lot of I think these are, um, I think these were a special offering middle this week, or something. But they're just um, sort of corporate pairs, I think. Mm -hmm. Yes, but I mean, soft, soft will be fine. I mean, I suppose if you had a perfect pear, you could just eat it, but mm. so often you buy them and they're really hard and they're sort of sat in the fruit bowl and then all of a sudden have some of flies and it's too late. Yeah, that's right. Mm. They break them practically inside out. Yeah. They've got a pear. And they've got a pear. And they break them very quickly. Actually, they break them very quickly. If you cook them, you don't have to wait. Um, so we're just going to stew them in the butter and sugar for a bit, and then I've got um, some stem ginger that I'm going to add at the end. So you could also use crystallized ginger, maybe the, the kind that you find, it's much harder, and you find it on the, the sort of dried fruit area in the supermarket. Um, that's kind of a lot sweeter, but if you can slice that thinly, you know, if this is someone's playing, that would be the substitute of one. So if I can manage not to burn those. Okay. Right. But they won't cook completely, but they'll soften a little bit. And I think I've said the recipe, if you haven't got fresh pears, I'm sure you could do this with tin pears. Obviously that would be a lot softer. And you would probably need to kind of cook them in the, the butter and sugar at all, if they'd be quite sweet. <coughs> now this looks a lot but it takes three times the recipe to make um, one. I suppose if I was much bigger than I am I could do this the old fashioned way just with a wooden spoon. I can remember my nan making cakes. She wouldn't obviously have an electric mixer, but that would just be like she would clean everything with a wooden spoon. Or later on, one of those, those ones that are two whisks, can you turn the handle? Yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, okay. 
Um, and a couple of things of baking powder, I've also put a little bit of brown ginger in, just to make it extra gingery. But like grated orange, that could be very nice in there as well. Or maybe cardamom instead of ginger. Right, so what you meant to do is clean butter and the cream and then add the eggs gradually and then whisk it and fold in the flour. But actually I think it probably won't make any difference. If you've got self raising flour, it makes up for a lot. Actually, if you can see, even though I've done everything in completely wrong order, it's still kind of like quite light and airy, mm -hmm. just because we're using self raising flour. So, all the things about how you make sift everything and fold it in with a big breakfast spoon very carefully. Um, you know, you really do need to do that sometimes, but lots more recipes are quite forgiving. Mm -hmm. If you have the knife in the wrong direction, if you have the knife in the wrong direction, I haven't added any milk yet, I'm going to see what it's like. So it's like, um, what was it we were doing last week with the, the two pastry? Yeah, the dropping yeah. consistency. Yeah, yeah. So you mix everything in first and then yeah. then see. Because these, these eggs are a bit variable in size as well. So they're not exact. Um, yeah, so that's, that's a bit firm. I'm going to put a bit of milk in at this stage. Absolutely. Or you could just throw it all in your food mixer and press the button and on. That would be the same thing. Yeah, it's purely because I forgot to plug in the extension tape. And because we're being... Oh, no, it's not too you want. Yes, I know, but I forgot to plug it in earlier. Probably. So then if I run out of the kitchen, the viewers at home, yes. <laughs> whoever they might be, wouldn't realise where I'd go or what I was doing. Well, we're on TV. Yeah. <laughs> That's terrifying. Oh, so I would say this is more like um, less than 
So I turn it off because I start to sound a bit really scorching there. Um, so this is the slice. I think that there's probably about three pieces of stem ginger there, just very plainly sliced. Um, you can leave it out if you don't like it, or if you can use it, it doesn't matter. But, um, this is So the thing to do is sort of put a little dollops of it all over the place so then if there's gaps you can use a knife to join them up. But I suppose when you see people doing things on television, they've got it's like Blue Peter, isn't it? They've got like 17 versions that they prepared earlier, or somebody else prepared earlier. Yeah. Yeah. gently make sure that the edges are sort of sealed so that as it's cooking the filling underneath doesn't sort of bubble up and end up on the bottom of your oven. It's very well to clean. Just until the, the sponge is sort of golden brown, and you should see bits of uh, stuff underneath. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> 